on the first instance of building it, it actually you know, caught on fire because uh, we wired it wrong. We definitely believe that there was a better way. Hi, my name is Dwight Neptune. I am 22. I'm the founder and CEO of Beagle. So ever since I was a kid, I've always been messing around with tech and it just stuck with me and I always wanted to build something that people enjoy and I saw FPV as the entryway to building really cool tech products. So this is the Beagle office. So here's our content director, he's currently working on some stuff we just shot today for our drone kit 2S, which is actually out by the time you see this video. Um, this is our R&D desk, basically where we just research stuff, um, we're always soldering and doing new things and, and trying our ideas. Here we have some stuff packaged, it's supposed to go out today as well. Starting a tech startup is not easy, uh, but we we were really anxious to get moving. And the first thing we did uh, when we came up with the concept was basically get off the shelf parts. And my co-founders and I worked together to basically build what we assume would be a better version of what we tried to build on our own uh, and just sold it. And we were very transparent. We said, hey, you know, this is not gonna work very well. This is what we think we can do. Uh, and we sold it at pretty much no profit just to test that it made sense. So when we got our first sale, it was about six in the morning. Um, I woke up probably around seven and I saw, it says like, congratulations on your sale. And I was like, holy crap, like no way. Someone actually bought this because it was in my head. It was like, dude, this is not the best we could do. But with what we had, we definitely made do with what we had. And our first user, uh, he actually couldn't set it up. He couldn't figure it out because we didn't write it properly. So we had to go to his place. It was actually at um, a private school. Uh, and then he helped us go through what was wrong and then we helped him figure it out and bought new parts and basically that was our first ever customer and it really helped us realize you know we really have something that could be potentially useful. This is my co-founder Keelan. He's currently working on a new Omnitune system. Uh, so as you can see he's messing with the rates and the PIDs and all that stuff in beta flight. Over here I'm working on this is my desk, this is where I work on new products, new ideas. I'm actually working on our new drone, um, so that's actually enough. You can't really, I'm not supposed to see all of that. But basically, uh, it's gonna have a very, very crazy, like alien spaceship design. It's gonna be really cool. So, I work a very long time, um, usually from 7 a.m. to like midnight or later. There's not much of a social life when you're a founder. Uh, it's very much, you know, you've got a vision that you want to accomplish. And the reality is that you're not the only one in the marketplace. Uh, a truly big market has lots of players and lots of other players who are looking to get in because they see the opportunity there as well. So the reality is you have to outwork as much people as you can. My co-founder, Luis. He's currently working on some back-end stuff uh, for our back-end systems as well as the 3D modeling for our drone, which is basically how we do stuff on our website. Um, everything you see on our great website is usually 3D model, it's not actually a photo. Um, this is our test inventory, um, I guess safe, so we keep all the stuff that we're working on. Uh, our 3D printer is here where we print all our new ideas, and then yeah, we've got the HomePod for music, and we're all just working. Raising funding as a black founder, it's, it's a weird situation. Uh, you go into the boardrooms, I've been with several VCs, angel funds, um, and like nine times out of 10, I'm the only black founder there. What happens is you see a situation where a lot of tech companies and VC funds, it's almost like a little bit of a forced diversity situation. It's like, for example, it's like, oh, we're investing in black founders. It's like, that's cool, but that's not the real issue. I think. The reality is it's we need to get a situation where there's a lot of underlying bias that we as humans have that we just, it's just there. Uh, it's, it's not conscious. If you look at any successful founder, 
um, there's a bit of a confirmation bias where a VC is investing in a founder and if he sounds like a Zuckerberg and he looks like, you know, an Elon Musk, it's, it's, the bias is there. Our team's extremely diverse by default. I mean, literally, we have everyone from every corner of the world. It just attracts other people that want to work with a diverse group. Being clear and having an environment that's accepting and having a culture that's accepting will automatically create uh, a diversified workplace. And going back to VC funding, it's again watching those biases where it's like, hey, I've never seen a black founder pull off a billion dollar company. And our team and I definitely hope to change that. Um, actually, we're gonna change that for sure.